Hey boys and girls of the YouTube world, today the Dop Dog and I are out walking around in 9 degree weather. Single digit, fair night. Hear the snow squeaking? Yeah, not a noise we like to hear. It's kind of like a rod knock, but we're so in love with Camaros, F bodies. Go check out the video on this 78 wannabe Z28. Maybe it's a real Z28. We never checked the body tag but we're gonna get this 1986 Chevrolet maybe a Z28 Camaro running for the first time in 20 years or so I'm told so let's just jump back in time to when it's a whole lot warmer and we're gonna go jump in the skid steer and we're gonna drag this thing inside because I don't feel like that plastic front bumper is gonna like Bernie hooking onto it and dragging it in so let's go back in the old dilly, time machine dilly, dilly, dilly. Bob was driving by, he swung in, so I roped him to help push this thing in, but we're gonna let her thaw out. Just, you know, to get that satisfaction going, I'm gonna break the ice off the side. And then I'm gonna enjoy a sandwich. This is like half inch thick ice. Maybe three quarters. Oh yeah. Went to be here. That's a keeper. Yeah. You gotta make sure to get her out of the antennae hole. You want that though? So satisfying! What oh, thought the mirror fell off? Alright, I'll put them all overhead. We'll see you tomorrow. That's all thought out. Oh, what a fine young man just sitting there with his paws crossed, watching the ice melt. All right, see you tomorrow. Got this thing up in the air. I figured, you know, we got this nasty, loud, stinky used oil furnace blasting air up there, so let's put the car up there. We'll get on that later, but anyway, how the story went on this car. Facebook Marketplace deal came up. I think the car was like... 12, 1600 bucks, looked really good. I've wanted one of these third gens for a while. I want a higher option one, like a Z28 or an IROC. I really wanted a five speed. This is an automatic, you gotta choose your battles. But I wanted something that needed some work because obviously I'm cheap and I want to put an LS in one because LSs are so good. These things are already fuel injected. These things are, in my opinion, turds from the factory. So I wanted a non-runner because I didn't want to take a nice one and take the tune port, or TBI, or whatever these things. I don't know anything about these third gens, other than they look cool, they're already popular, and they're getting more popular. And I want one with an LS, and I want a six-speed. We could always swap the five-speed stuff, or six-speed, or whatever in it later, but anyway, the pictures this thing look really good. It was black, it was wet, it was a barn find, had like 30,000 miles. I told the guy to take it. He said, okay, you're so-and-so in line, and then I knew this is where it was gonna happen. The bidding war. He's like, hey, would you do 1800? I'm like, yeah. N needless to say, this thing's three hours away in Manville, Manville, north of Grand Forks, probably three and a half hours away. <laughs> Long story short, the bidding war went back and forth between me and some other individuals who maybe they didn't even exist. And so, so that was a stupid idea on my part. I should have said, yeah, let those guys have it or that guy have it, whatever. I think I paid like 32 or 3600 bucks for this thing. Couldn't get there for a day or two because I was out of town. This guy happened to be out of town. Or somebody was out of town. I got there the next day, saw this thing in the barn. I'm like, mm, that looks like a repaint. Doesn't look like a 30,000 mile car. Oh yeah, there's no title. Mm, we can work around that. Got it on the trailer. It sat out here because I'm just like, I just couldn't get excited about it. I just knew there were some things wrong with it. And I should have went with my gut instinct and I should have drove home empty. Last night after Bobber and I had a couple of sandwiches, I was like, you know, I got the bright idea to thaw her off out in the air. So I put the hoist underneath it, everything looked good. You could hardly get underneath it because these things sit low, with the ground effects and stuff. 
And I started lifting it up and the back started going up and the front didn't. Let me show you just how bad this thing is. I am an idiot. I bought a lot of cars, I bought a lot of crappy cars, but I don't pay a lot for crappy cars usually. And I paid, like I said, over three grand for this thing. So you guys need to go to mortski.com, get yourself a cap, get yourself a banner, get yourself a hoodie, get yourself some stickers, magnetic screwdrivers, magnetic can koozies. We gotta buy them all because we're gonna lose the shop on this one for sure. I, we're gonna probably hopefully get it running, but this is a parts car at best. Ain't even a good parts car. And if you know of a good, clean, third gen Camaro or Firebird or Trans Am, the old Trans Merrill birds. Hit us up, mortgagerepair at gmail.com. We're just gonna kick this one in the weeds when this video is done, I got a feeling, but who knows, maybe we'll fall in love. Do you feel like falling in love with a Z28? Yeah, me either. Starting from the front, I think my cable came unhooked and I poked that hole there. It's a repaint. You can see where it's been painted over. It's it, this thing, I hope I can find the pictures for the Facebook listing because this thing looks so good. Radiator sports, that's a factory hole. But power steering lines have rusted through and are leaking on my floor. I'm gonna get my pointing slash rust popping device ready to go here. All right, what can we find that's good? The tires got lots of tread, but they're rotted out, which, you know, these things sit for a while. These are a 15 inch tire. What are they like, a 225, 60? 215, 65. So they're a good looking tire. And the white letters, they're good years. That's good. These wheels have definitely been repainted. There's fresh paint on those lug nuts. It's missing the center caps. Really good, what do you want to call it? Uh, indicator that this is a crappy repair job. The inner fenders don't fit for crap. You can see the overspray on the hardware. They would have painted the fender, would have put the inner fender in, put the hardware on there. They don't fit for crap. Overspray everywhere. Okay, trying to be positive. Somebody's painted over the frame and all this stuff. Yeah, definitely not a 30,000 mile barn fine car. These cars, uh, I didn't know this, but they don't have an upper and lower control arm there. Was it a McPherson strut style setup? So, much like a Ford Mustang or the Trino, we're gonna wanna check up there for us because that inner fender up there is uh, structural. These are a unibody car as well. Tie rod ends, they all look good. Not all slopped out, just a little rusty. Look at this engine mount though. Look at that. I, oh, I have never seen an engine mount rust out. And this is not just from sitting in a building. This is from years of salt, Minnesota. Power steering pump, super rusty. You're never gonna get that fitting out. Oil pans, rusty. Even the block. Look at all that rust on that thing. Just hot frickin' garbage. Pulleys even are all rusted up. It's got that silly half serpentine setup. Oh, at least we got our serpentine pulley for, what did we need that for? Oh, that the other Camaro. That car is so much gooder compared to this. Somebody should buy that thing. Uh, like I said, this first time working on one of these, these cars apparently have factory electric fans. So, you know, saving all the horsepower. This thing's been rusty for so long that the transmission cooler line, somebody replaced the end, put a chunk of rubber, and then spliced a chunk of rubber in there. So, again, isn't rusty from sitting in a barn with humidity. That's uh, road salt. Good news is this engine mounts in much better condition. Oh, is that the smog pump? Look at how rotten the smog pump is, full of corrosion. Just terrible, terrible decisions. Hey, the cover is there for the uh, inspection cover on the flex plate, torque converter. Tranny's got a massive leak like they all do. Looks like it's coming out the shift shaft. Not worried about that. Should be a 700R4, so maybe we'll get a positive, you know, 700R4 core. Maybe a good one to throw on the shelf. I don't know what kind of oil filter that is. Looks like the cheapest one you can get. Looks like they got single exhaust that goes into the catalytic converter. Bad news is catalytic converter prices are down. So uh, yeah, we'll probably only get like 50 or 75 bucks out of that thing. Single exhaust, somebody unbolted. Fuel lines are new, of course, because I'm sure they rotted out. Look, there's a splice there, splice there, splice there, splice there. Whole bunch of zip ties, another splice. Another splice. And this is what the guy said is wrong. Just needs a fuel pump. Okay, pal. Okay. Oh, transmission mount. That's rusted out too. Ah, uh, the cool thing about these cars, I don't know if it's cool or not. They got this 
I forget what it's called, torque arm that goes all the way from the front drive shaft pivot to the rear end. And I guess it really helps these things plant, you know, hook up and go. So maybe that's good. How's the floor? It's not the best, not the worst. There's where the lift, you're supposed to lift on these pinch welds. The pinch weld just kind of went up into the car on both sides. I mean, it's not as rotten as I thought, I guess. I slept on it. I feel better about my life decisions now. But first things first, we got to clean up this whole fuel thing. We got some mechanics wire there, some zip ties. They cut them off, but they didn't cut them off flush. I feel like you should probably not tie your fuel line to a piece of suspension that's going to be bouncing up and down. You know, oh, the old double zip tie. These do look like stainless lines, so that's nice. Oh, brake lines rotted off. Rear end's super rusty. Uh, Z28, so hopefully it's got a posi. Oh yeah, trying to find the positive things. These are a coil spring rear with trailing arms. What else do they got? So what, oh, there's supposed to be a track bar here, it looks like, that would hook to here. Hopefully it's in the car. Uh, I'm guessing they had to take that off and the exhaust off and they're trying to get this tank out. You can see they didn't get very far. And he said it just needs a new fuel pump, but it sure looks like it's got a new fuel sending unit. Frame rails aren't all rusty back here. Oh, ooh. Yeah. She's a little rusty back here though. He said this was like a undercover detective car or something. This guy was, he was special. Almost as special as the sucker that bought it from him. Oh, just everything. Just, I mean, it's not like rotted through, but it's just freaking rust scale. So I'm sure every piece of hardware we touch. Oh, sure enough, right there. Use limited slip differential additive only. Diff cover ain't rusted through. Perfect. Okay, well, I definitely feel a lot better than I did last night. I thought, man, this car is going to be miserable. It's going to be terrible. I got screwed. I definitely got screwed, but... It's, it's, it's workable. Let's get this thing down on the ground, take a look at everything else. Hopefully the fuel pump that I bought, got sitting on the shelf, is all that it needs. Yeah, right. Definitely need more than that. I really need to get an education on these cars and what the Z28 options are and what changed from year to year, but you guys will leave that in the comments below. So this isn't, allegedly, an 86 Z28. I do believe it's a true Z28 car. Uh, you couldn't get the five speed behind a 350 because you know the neck snap and horsepower probably like 220 horsepower of the uh, 5.7 was too much for the old uh, world-class t5 five speed so you could only get the five speed behind the 305 and then i think you could get a 3.8 v6 was the other engine option as well there was no big blocks yeah pretty much you got a v6 they didn't offer the iron duke four cylinder you got you got the 5.7 the 5.0 3.8. Let's check this thing out. I think the Z28s all had this super cool fancy hood. There's a lot of good parts on this car. I'm guessing the Z28s had these wheels, the ground effects, the Z28 badges. I do believe you could get T-tops in these cars. I think they were all bucket seat console shifts. You could see the terrible paint job popping out. Man, this thing looked good in the pictures, but not so good now. Oh, it is TPI. Tune part injection right there. All the goodness. We need the cover for the back window and the cover for the tail lights. I'm guessing the Z28s in the higher trim level had this fairing back here. Again, more bubbling in the paint and that's like actual rust right there. Interior is the best part of the car. It's pretty clean. Nice door panels, nice seats. So if we found a really chewy car, we could steal a uh, the interior out of this thing looks like it's got a factory tack Ooh, red lines at 4500 rpms real screamer am fm ac power windows power locks z28 tune port apparently they were trying to uh get the fuel pump out through the top there and i don't see a sway bar and all that other good stuff and uh looks like the spare tires back there let's get that hatch open duff where'd you go do you know how to open hatches or are you just a hood dog? I feel like I gotta go in there to open the hood anyway. Yeah, 34,604. He claims that's original. That is a lie. That's a lie. 
God, the Camaro keychain even duff. What a deal. You think the hoods or the 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 hatch thing is gonna stay open? Have we ever had a car with a hatch? Not on the channel anyway. No way the hood shocks are gonna hold that thing. Moment of truth. And nothing. You wanna go uh, fetch up a broomstick or something, pal? While I hold this? Oh, don't worry, they did their own wiring. Uh, oh, cut it open with a dull chisel. And it looks like they put a bunch of schmoo around it, you know? God, people suck. They suck so bad. No, Camaro people are the worst stuff, I swear it. All right, I think the first thing we just, uh, Throw a battery in it, see what happens. He says it would fire off ether. You were there, you saw the guy. He was he was special. Big dirt bike or snowmobile racer or something, wasn't he? All the trophies. So many participation ribbons. Okay. I'll get the hood prop rod myself. Yeah. Oh, they gave us a drill bit. Oh, it's a good one with the three-sided end on it. What is, what is the brown schmoo? I don't know. Tub and tile? Big carpenter. Empty box, some tire shine, the factory compact spare and jack. That's probably the most valuable thing we found thus far. Oh, hey, the carpet is back here. Mice has got into it a little bit. Oh, it's in that storage compartment. Probably been some drugs back there, no doubt. All right. Let's uh, get a battery in this thing. You know, open the hood. Perfect. Wow, look at you. So proud of yourself. Got that hood prop rod in there all by yourself. Here's a good boy. Good boy. I do believe this is my first tune port. I think these things are horrendous. And anybody who's thinking about swapping one in a car should rethink it. You can tell it's a tune port by the way that it is. This is an aspen. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Uh, I think the air intake's over there. Hopefully we aren't missing too many things. I'm guessing that's mass airflow sensor. That's been spliced. Somebody's put a newer alternator on it. Somebody wanted to flush the uh, cooling system. I've, I've seen a lot of these things, but I've never seen one in action. Maybe we'll have to try that out sometime. Oh, sweet. The air intake just goes from there to there. And some wing nuts holding her. You'll never start battery. I don't know what else we're looking for. Maybe just check the dipstick, Jimmy. Yep, it's black and it's on the stick. Good enough for the girls we go with. Yeah, a lot of wires, uh, power steering, air conditioning, belts on the AC. I don't know. Let's, let's put a battery in it and see how much we hate our lives after that. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what's back? Back again, Mortski's back. And the Mortski Minutes back. This week is brought to you by none other than Mortski Repair. Go to www.mortski.com and get this handy dandy magnetic screwdriver for that special someone. Or tell that special someone in you to get it for uh, Valentine's Day if you're into that whole stuff. But uh, this one says, screw the flowers. I'm watching Mortski because let's be honest, that's what most of us are going to be doing. I don't know what the old uh, Valentine's Day end up on this year but uh you got just about a month so give this dear old lady you know give her a, give her a good magnetic screw and driver for uh valentine's day or or don't get one for yourself tell her you want one whatever check us out mortski.com you can get hoodies you can get ball caps you can get banners you can get magnetic screwdrivers magnetic can koozies decals you name it we got it if we don't got it you don't need it. So this week's Morski Minute is uh, RPO codes, specifically the RPO codes of this 1986 Camaro Z28. Guess what Z28 stands for? It's an RPO code, kind of like a performance RPO code. I think it came out in 1969. Camaro came out in 1967. The Z28 RPO code came out in 1969. So let's go through the RPO codes in this car. Guess what? First up, the LB9. That's the engine in this baby. She's a 305, 190 horsepower, 285 foot-pounds of torque. It's the mid-grade. They did offer a four-cylinder. I was wrong earlier. Yeah, I know. I don't know everything. 
The L98, that was the big dog. That was the 350 that was 220 HPs, 320 foot-pounds of torque. So we missed out on that. I believe this car was sold to me as having a 350. Either way, not too disappointed. But the base level 305 in the Z28, the LG4, 155 horsepower. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Some of the other options this car's got, it's got a G80, which is limited slip or posi traction, whatever you want to call it. It's got a GU5 gear ratio. I got to look that up yet. Who cares? Uh, it does have something kind of neat. The G92 option, which is a, the rear axle performance ratio, Z28 only. Some of the other options it's got is A01, which is tinted glass. This car does not have N33, which is tilt. No tilt in this thing. It does not have cruise control. It does not have the DF1, which is the rear louvers. That is a huge disappointment. You gonna be part of the, get in here. Let's go. Get over here. Come on. Get in, get in on the, oh, get in on the old Mordski minute. Oh my gosh, you're like a Velociraptor in here. So uh, it's got an MXO, which is the automatic overdrive, the 700R4, doesn't have the manual. It's got A90, which is the power rear hatch. Uh, A31 power windows, does not have power locks. It's got the QYZ, which is the 21565 black wall. I like whoever ordered this thing. Tires, which is a Z28 tire, and it was a $92 credit because you got the black wall. So this guy spent his money in the right spots. Oh my gosh. Duff, you're just hogging the camera on the Morsky Minute. What else? Uh, WA855, which is black paint. And then it's got 82B interior, which is gray standard cloth. Uh, C49, rear defrost, B4K, radio with scan, seek, and a clock. Yeah, you could get it without the scan, without the seek. And also you could get it scan and seek without a clock. We got the clock. All right. I think that's pretty much it. And there you have it. That's this week's Morsky Minute. Go check out www.morsky.com. And get your uh, screw the flowers. I'm watching Mortsky, magnetic screwdriver. Thanks very much for watching. All right, back to your regularly scheduled shenanigans. Or maybe a ride in a Z28. Who knows? So far, so good. Definitely going to be stripped out on this side. Like, how hard is it to find a 6.5 ths or 8 millimeter? Either one is acceptable. Ugh. All right, let's go see our battery spots for this week's gonna be. Two of 21. You think that thing's gonna come back to life? Probably not. All right, NASCAR Arthur is our sponsor this week for the old battery. You can be a battery sponsor at mortski.com. Arthur's been with us since I'm pretty sure the inception of the channel. Yeah, comments every week. He's a... Not only a subscriber, but he's a member. I don't really offer anything for the members. Sorry, you guys. I try to do a good job about responding to your comments, though. Yeah. Arthur has been around. He's one of the originals, I'm pretty sure. No smoke yet, so that's good. Go steal the keys out of the hatch. Crank her over, see what happens. Oh, these were the best keys, though. The keys are actually in good shape. Like, they don't have 130,000. Maybe it was just 30,000 miles of non-stop salt driving. I like these ones with the uh, rubber cover. I always wear protection on your key. Ooh. Kind of a cool gauge layout. 145 speedo, probably lucky if it breaks 110. Fuel gauge, voltage, temp, no oil pressure. Oh, there it is down in the corner. She's pegged to seven. Oh, the door chime works. Speaking of doors. Oh, we gotta turn the key on. Brake, fasten seat belts. Whew, power mirrors, look at that. That's like something straight out of the US government's Air Force. Looks like our cubby hole here has been stuck back on with a pop rivet. The baseball shift knob. Pew! 
right, that's got a nice solid clunk to it. How about the... The hatch pop works. We can have that thing shoot a parachute out. Do these stupid things not have a glove box? That's terrible. I don't want the center console. Any good stuff in there? Oh, there's the spid sheet, though. Oh, yeah, just... Maybe it was an old uh, deputy car. It's got the uh, CB radio mount. Z28 is what we're looking for. I don't, I don't see a Z28 in there. Why would they put them in alphabetical order? Why would you put your stupid CB mount right there? It's got the L89. I think that's the 350. I think I heard that before. I don't know what that means, but it's a hot rod. Do not remove. Well, they bought something for $25 where they parked it oh it's it's classy it's from the dg totino's combo pizza for buck 75 got two of them some lays the dg auto micro wash and dg citrus wipes oh i guarantee he washed this thing up just before he dumped it on me what's the date of this nope 8 1 of 21 that must have been about the time they put the battery in it that's been in there a while power windows oh yeah Come on, baby. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it! Oh, please go back up. Oh, yeah. Good to go. How about you? Nice. Oh, these stupid door things were a terrible idea. Just put a stinking glove box in. Rear defrost. Does the cigarette lighter work? Oh, we need it. We're going to start testing those things years ago. Sorry, Wes. We're going to get to work here shortly as soon as the cigarette lighter works so the uh, illinois state patrol don't come after us do 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 oh yeah all right let's see if she cranks so here's the thing fuel injection um it's it's almost always the fuel pump and if it's not the fuel pump you're in trouble case in point the uh s10 chassis swap tbi swap 53 gmc that we fought what did we fight oh yeah it was the wiring harness so uh i think we're gonna do what he said he did is give her a whiff of ether and see if this thing lights off and then we know we got spark and compression and then we just got to diagnose the fuel situation and clearly somebody was diagnosing the fuel system earlier and if they would have just bought some new lines and a new fuel pump and dropped it out. Better than if they were just taken it somewhere and not torn it apart like a bunch of cavemen. It's so easy, a caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh, no, I... Not cool. I did not... We wouldn't be in this situation if people weren't idiots, but then I wouldn't be getting to buy it. And I don't want to call you guys idiots for watching, but I I'm the idiot this week. I am definitely the idiot. I should have walked away from this car. Learning experience. You got to pay for this. Day. It's like college, you know? You gotta pay for this stuff. The interior is good. If if you never had to get out of this car or work on it, it'd probably be all right. All right, let's get some brake cleaner. Hopefully, the flammable stuff, and see what happens. Where's the distributor on these things? Is that? I think my dad had like a '95 convertible Z28. It was a poor decision on his half. Midlife crisis. Sorry, Dad. It was uh, deep purple. Was the color? Pretty nice car, actually. Low miles. One owner. Then my aunt had it, and now I think she sold it. Maybe she still got it. But I think that, like, OptiSpark, is that what they called it? Like, the distributor was by the water pump or something? Terrible idea. <clears throat> Too early for sandwiches. All right. 3M brake cleaner. Flammable. Contains no chlorine. We're going to need you. Hit the key, Duff. Poison, danger, extremely flammable. Well, that shouldn't be our problem then. Great. Is it because the throttle body isn't opening? A little's good, a lot's better. I will take that as an attempt to fire. So let's dig into the whole fuel pump tank, line, filter, restraint return debacle we got going on there let's see if we can get this stupid tank out here apparently it's really hard because thor the last person who worked on this thing couldn't get it out with his hammer and chisel 
You think you got it? I'll just sit back and drink coffee this morning? And you do all the work? That'd be great. Let me get them eye boogers. It was a long night, wasn't it? Okay, fuel tank time. Look, Wes, we're only like 45 minutes in before we get any tools. Oh, we swapped the battery. That required tools. We should probably unhook that battery before we do this. Nah. And boom goes the dynamite. So the first thing you want to do when you're troubleshooting something like, say this is a customer car, uh, you want to verify the customer complaint. So in this case, customer complaint is car does not run. Check. A uh, customer has worked on the car before, so you automatically double your rates. Uh, and it says it's a fuel related issue, which we have confirmed. We're not getting fuel to the engine and the engine will run when we provide some type of combustible liquid gas. So now we're gonna see if we're getting power to our fuel pump. So we got our power probe out and one would think, you know, where are you gonna check for, for power? Right here in the trunk. But uh, the connector is not up here. It's somewhere down below. Look at this though. They had really good intentions. They drilled holes in the corners so they'd have a nice, you know, radius. And then, uh, then things things went south after that. I don't. I think they were trying to cut it with the tin snips, which I suppose less sparks that way. But yeah, not so good. I'm hoping these aren't the fuel pump wires, but I feel like they are. Oh, there was a fire. Oh. This thing's telling us a story now. Look at how all the, I thought, ah, it's just a blem in the paint. That paint all got hot. That rubber got hot. These wires got hot. This all got melted. I thought there was a cover here that they just took off. Seems there's uh, more to the story. And now you know the rest of the story. So I wonder if that was self-inflicted by them doing some plumbing? Anywho, I'm going to see if we can find this connector because there's got to be a connector for that fuel pump. Let's see if we got power. Oh, look at this. I thought this was tire shine. Look at that babe on there. Joan, I'm pretty sure that's her name. Joan's just got her uh, wire wheels. Special heavy duty latex formula. That's what Joan likes. That seals and inflates tube and tubeless tires instantly. Master tire seal and inflator. Extremely flammable, contents under pressure, read precautions on back. The Master Chemical Corp, Memphis, Tennessee. Keep out of reach of children, doesn't say anything about dogs. Store this can only in the trunk of your car. Does, does a hatch count as a trunk? Do not store in glove compartment, good thing, because we don't have one. Center console or interior of car. We have a center console. Technically, I think this would be the interior, so yeah. What are the odds this is any good? I kind of want to put this in somebody's tire. Who can we sabotage? We'll take this with the Oklahoma when we go visit Puddin. I don't think we'd get it across the go the border to uh, sabotage DD Speed Shops Bricklin. Plus, he probably fills all his tires. This is like DD Schmoo right here. He should Dan, you should get this on uh, DD Schmoo dot com that slats ca because I'm pretty sure he has that exact same out outfit that Joan does with these shoes and everything. That is a, a, Joan knows what's up. Oh, she's got a wedding ring on, so clearly her husband is a pile. Can't come fix the uh, tire on her. I think that's an Olds Tornado, or was it Cadillac's version? My mom had a Tornado. That thing actually boogied out pretty good. But anyway, DD Speed Shop approved. So, uh, what were we going to do? Oh, yeah, we're going to go underneath and try to find a connector, see if we're getting power. We should probably get a hold of Wes and see... A wiring diagram. Let's see if we get power to the right spot. Because clearly, something happened here. And, and maybe we want to check some fuses. First things first, I'm going to see if all these colors are the same. And then I'm going to go check that connector. Not only did the Camaro get burned, so did we. All right, boys and girls. We got our 110-piece electrical diagnosis kit from the old Amazonia. I'll try to remember to put the link in the description. This kit's like 155 bucks. I just looked. But it is invaluable when troubleshooting. Terrible. 1980s GM electronics so we got our ground from our power probe Mojo's welding transmission mounts over there for super t10 transmission four speeds and we got power on the power probe and our pump ain't running so either we got an issue in the wiring or the pump so let's just drop that thing on the ground because that's what needs to happen 
And Mojo, he's a good kid. Just one hand in it over there, winging away, stacking nickels. You stacking dimes over there? Huh? You stacking dimes over there? <laughs> Here's that kid I was talking about. It's good. Uh, like I said, it's a big investment, 150 bucks. But if you do a much computer controlled diagnosis, this thing is invaluable. All right, let's get that tank dropped. And even though it, whether that tank's full or empty, we should be hearing some buzzing going on in there. And I don't hear a click or a clunk or nothing. It could take a pump out the top through that hole, but that just sounds miserable. Let's get this stand on the ground where we can work on it. Nickels, stacking them over there. So what is keeping this thing, the fuel filler now? I don't know, this brace, it, it's like a body strut, something or other. That should be parallel with that. And the last guy's bent it pretty good. We bent it real good. It was seized in that bushing in there, so a little heat goes a long ways. Get your uh, little heat goes a long ways decal at mordski.com. Heats your friend, especially when it's rusty. Definitely not an ideal tank install and removal design on GM's behalf. Missed the mark there, GM. The mark of excellence, definitely missed. Well, you could tell by the dents in the tank and the scrapes and the scratches all over, they gave it a, a pretty valiant effort at trying to get it out of there. We refuse to lose, so we got her out of there. Let's get this pump. Oh, that's why. That pump isn't even in place the way it should be. It's sitting half cattywampus in there. Let's get that out of there and see why her pump ain't working. Just to prove the naysayers wrong, let's hook up the uh, power probe here and show you that it doesn't do anything. I'm going to be really upset if it starts functioning now all of a sudden. Nothing. Also, the tank seems pretty empty, and I can hear some debris rolling around in there. Not surprised. I'm sure the inside of the tank isn't as rusty as the outside of the car. Gotta love the DD Speed Shop fuel uh, pump install here. Real nice. Some people should have their tools taken away. Ah. Oh. This silicone job is going to fight us the entire way, isn't it? I'm done asking nicely. Oh, it's all the goo. What is this stuff? Liquid nails? Jesus Christ. This should just fall right out at this point. Just taking a shot in the dark, but that looks like something out of a junkyard. I think I got a new fuel pump for like 30 bucks. So yeah, don't put use electric fuel pumps in. And don't put them in extremely rusty tanks. Yeah, that was never going to run. Wow. So yeah, I don't know what we're going to do now. I have a sandwich and think about it because I got a new fuel pump. But there's no point sticking one in this tank because all that rust is 
going to wreak havoc on everything upstream. Downstream? Downstream. Yeah, we need to work on that five gallon bucket project with a high pressure pump built inside of it. One day, one day we will. <sighs> Son of a biscuit. I guess I should order a fuel tank too. Definitely not gonna buy a fuel tank for this heap though. So I grabbed our new Carter pump, hooked that up. What's the part number on this thing? Like anybody cares. P74209HP, that means high performance. Not likely. But look at this, and that one didn't work. Look what we got going on here. We got a zip tie and some mechanics wire. And that clip just shoved over that thing like held in by hopes and dreams. So, doesn't matter how much power we provide up here, it's not going to make it through that connector. You got another sending unit just hanging out doing nothing, Duff? It's just you hanging out doing nothing around here. All right, let's see what we can figure out for a sending unit. That's funny that they bought a used fuel pump and put it on a new sending unit and then put it in place with uh, liquid nails. This probably isn't liquid nails, but what do I know? I ain't a carpenter. It's the wrong stuff is what it is. It's not the right stuff. We're down to the nitty gritty. Hey, never mind the monster cookies that Mrs. Mojo sent over. Shout out to Mrs. Mojo for uh, sending us some monster cookies. Mixing it up a bit. Testing this fuel pump. You can see when I give her the old meat and potatoes, she spins. Sounds like that uh, wingy ding thing in your girlfriend's bedroom drawer. Anywho, this back to the kit over here. We got connectors to hook up to this fuel pump. We got different connectors to tap in to this connector. We got different connectors to tap into that connector. These are female round pin. These are male square pin. And these are female square pin. But when I had the fuel pump hooked up here and here, I wasn't getting anything. And then I hooked it up here, still wasn't getting anything. So somewhere between here and there, I got a break. So I'm gonna do a little digging. I can only imagine what somebody screwed up. I think I found the culprit. When I give her power, I gotta wiggle this connector. Power's on. So these boys and girls must have been chasing their tail for quite some time. Let me see if I can't find a better connector for that. We'll try to modify this one so we make a better connection. Look at this, the new fuel pump comes with all these connectors. And so I'm guessing the last person, when they uh, made their connections or whatever, screwed her up because look at this fuel pump now, works great. So, Chev, 91 something. We'll just put that back in the box, save that for a rainy day project. Speaking of rainy day projects, we've been meaning to take a five gallon bucket and make it into a high pressure portable fuel cell. That tank has a bunch of like slopes to it to where the where you cut out that the sending unit hole. You know what I'm saying. So I wanted one that's flat. And what's flat? This thing, I think it's out of a square body. I thought all these holes were the same size. Nope. Hot dog down a hallway, as Wes would say. Is there any tread left on the tires at all? Or at this point, would it be like throwing a hot dog down a hallway? So, we're gonna have to cut this one out. And here's what I was talking about. If, if you cut here to here, then you get this dip right here. So we're gonna have to do some body work or get some more tub and tile like these guys use to make that seal. But anywho, we're gonna cut that out. And then uh, we're probably gonna have to modify our fuel pump, hopefully to reach as far into the bucket as we can. And then, uh, yeah, we should have ourselves a portable fuel cell system. Maybe. Hopefully. Why is there so many hoses? Pressure, return, and these two must be vents or something? Who knows? We could probably tell we looked at it. Oh yeah, one's a rollover vent, it looks like. And the other one's just a vent. All right, let's make a fuel cell.
Well, short of uh, maybe a mounting bracket and a fuel cap, or a fuel cell, redneck fuel cell, is, is done. I didn't put any sealant around it, so that's gonna leak. And we got a freaking fuel gauge on it too, so that's gonna be pretty fantastic. Next on the list, I guess, is try to uh, clean up some fuel lines, make sense of it, run some new wires for the fuel pump, or not new wires, but we gotta relocate them inside the car because obviously we're not gonna mount our five gallon bucket right there. So hopefully we could push that connector through or pull it through or do something and get that in the car and then uh, fish our lines into the car as well somehow. I'm guessing with all this rubber on here, we should fight into a spot that we can splice it. God, this is so terrible. Why wouldn't you just move that chunk of rubber to there? Why, why wouldn't you have a, a clamp on it? Who knows? Okay, time to do some cleaning. Oh, look at that. If we uh, use the seat belts properly, we could just buckle that thing in place. Be good to go. Watch this. I'm going to turn the key. It even works. Well, it makes noise anyway. So now just to figure out what the lines do, I'm going to take some 3 ace fuel hose and route it from the pump to where the only other 3 ace line is up there. And then we're going to turn the pump on and we're going to determine which one's the return. And then we're going to hook that up and we're just going to forget about the other two because I'm sure they're evap or emissions or some canister or vacuum or something. We don't need those. If we do, we'll figure that out at that point. So we'll lift this thing up in the air, run a 3 ace line, try to find somewhere to zip tie to other than that torque arm and uh, get some gas, I suppose. Duh. You want to run the fuel line or you want to Get some gas. Fuel line is me, gas is you. Okay, they're both me. You're no help this week. Alrighty, let's see if we can't make the interior smell like gas. Best part about the car, and we're probably gonna ruin it. How often is it that you make a car better by putting a five gallon bucket fuel cell inside of it? Not very often. Somebody's probably yelling at the screen right now, you're not making this car any better. Well, come on, if it runs, drives, moves, I mean, it's better than it was when we started. So there's that. We could just drill a hole in the roof and just put the fuel filler neck in the roof, run this right into the can. Oh, that's brilliant. Brilliant! Or we could put it like up in the B pillar and have a flexi hose going to it, like full on NASCAR race car stuff. Yeah. Imagine all the brilliant ideas I could come up with if I wasn't sober. All right, now I'm gonna go hit the key and we're gonna see fuel runs out the return hose or we're gonna see which one we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens we're gonna turn the key but I don't have a return line hooked up I'm hoping to identify it. that's what I'm hoping for, but I don't know if that's gonna happen is that pump that quiet when it's got fuel in it I don't hear it I wonder if she's running it wants to go sure enough we got a fuel leak all right, let's lift her in the air and see which line's spewing out fuel, and then run a new hose from that line to this return line. And she's gonna go. Did you hear it? It wanted to start. It wanted it real bad. Check this out. Pretty sweet. There's our pressure. And there's our return. Just got a little chunk of rubber there for the return and used uh, that stainless line that they had. Whoosh, ran her over there, rotted her through the stock holder, and then tied our rubber pressure line 
in a few spots way better than it was before i mean i don't like all this rubber but who likes rubbers anyway uh yeah let's go crank her up see what happens mm -hmm. i just took a shot in the dark on where this return goes i know it's not that giant three ace because why would it be so uh 50 50 90 rule on these other two 50 50 odds you're wrong 90 percent of the time they all go inside of a five gallon bucket so i mean could it really be worse probably let's get this thing down on the ground and see if she lights off i feel like it's gonna it's gotta right what do you think pal is she gonna go it's gotta well here goes nothing slingshot engage slingshot engage It's not continuing to run. Give her a couple more tries. It's the security system. Just kidding, they don't have those. Maybe. Probably not. Let's put that intake hose on it and see if we can't get the mass airflow sensor or whatever it is hooked up underneath there. Maybe that'll help. Can't hurt, right? I should probably check underneath the car for massive fuel leaks too. Oh my gosh. I think that's the mass air. Yeah, that's got to be the mass airflow sensor. That thing is ginormous. It's made by Bosch, so you know it's good. The clip is backwards, so you know it's German. Das Auto. Das Auto. For cheese and rice. Go to your home. Don't you know where your home is? Why didn't you just go home? That's your home. Are you too good for your home? Answer me. How does this doodaddy-o work? Kind of looks like part of it's missing. Kind of looks like it wasn't supposed to come apart, but somebody took it apart. Yep. It's fine. You don't need any of that stuff to be tight, do you? It'll be good. I'm gonna go crank it over and see what happens. I'm gonna do a little bit more diagnostic work. It just starts and dies. The only thing I can think of is to swap that return hose onto something that's got less back pressure or maybe pinch it off and add more back pressure. I don't know, should be the right fuel pump. Clearly we're getting fuel pressure. Uh, look in the tank, or fuel cell, and it's submerged. So should be getting fuel up here. I don't know where to tap into these things to uh, Check for fuel pressure, but we can maybe look that up, make sure we're getting fuel pressure. But other than that, I'm at a loss. And uh, as amazing as this car is, I don't know how much more I want to dig into it, but we'll dig into it just a little bit more. Try a couple things, see what happens. Oh, cause the old Duff wants to do donuts in the Z28, doesn't he? Yeah, me too. All right, move that return hose to a different port on there. That port was below the fuel that we were connected to originally. And the reason I know that is cause as soon as I unhooked it, it was Blasting fuel back all down my armpits. So I don't know where that return is supposed to be, but I'm guessing it's probably supposed to be above the fluid level, not below. We'll see what happens. Got much faith in it? Yeah, me either. Stupid electronic fuel injection. Same crap. What do I hear hissing up here though? Of course, once I get up here, it quits. I'm gonna do a quick uh, search around here to see if there's any vacuum hoses that ain't hooked up or wires or who knows what else. Never mind the giant's mouse nest that's underneath the intake manifold. I'm sure that's fine. I oh, we found our fuel pressure port connection. Oh, it's tight. Uh, Look at the fuel lines up there. By the looks of things, we're gonna have a real cheap tune port donor car for somebody. You could 
tune part swap your 1982 Chevy Blazer. 82. Could you get an S10 Blazer that year? I think so. Oh, coley dokely. Uh, so the cap just coming out, the whole fitting came out. And I dropped it down into the deep dark abyss. And it's probably made of aluminum. So I can't grab it with a magnet. This should be fun. These be magnetic. And you're not. Son of a biscuit. How does this even happen? What the heck do they call these little claw things? You squeeze them and it grabs the stuff. Nothing can stop the claw! Boom tube had some fancy name for it. Oh, mechanic's arm or something like that. I've never, never used one. I don't know why I, where this one came from or why I have it, but we're gonna find out today. Oh, 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 all those hours of playing that claw game at the arcade are finally paying off. Nope, come on now. Well, I got it, but how could I have dropped it down that hole any better? I see why they went from aluminum caps to plastic caps. These aluminum ones, you can tighten them up enough where it actually pulls the whole fitting out instead of taking the cap off. So I'm gonna take that cap off and put this back in there. All right, let's try to thread it back in without dropping it. All this is, is just a Schrader valve that you can hook a pressure gauge up to to see what you got for fuel pressure. Okay, I pinched off the return line. Hoping to add some more fuel pressure to see what happens. Well, pinching off the return line didn't help anything. So let's uh, hook a gauge up, see what we're getting for fuel pressure. And then we'll have to go to the interwebs and see what we're supposed to have for fuel pressure. I mean, it's got a new pump and some fresh lines, but anything's possible. Especially when you don't know what you're doing and what you're working on and what it's supposed to be doing and how you're supposed to work on it. Yeah, tune part of life. Real good. All right, we got a little reddit and educated and whatchamacallit on the old uh, tune port last night. Turns out there's nine injectors on this thing. It's an eight cylinder, so there's a cold start injector. And I'm wondering if that's the only injector that isn't in fire, is, is firing. That's why it's starting up and then dying right away. I don't know. I think it would run rough on just that one injector for a longer amount of time. But I also hooked up the fuel pressure gauge and we're not getting any fuel pressure. So we're going to diagnose why we're not getting any fuel pressure. I'm not overly sold on my Amazon $30 oil. Did I say oil pressure? Fuel pressure my $30 Amazon fuel pressure gauge, so, but it has worked in the past. So I don't know, I and mean, it's zero. It's not like we're getting eight, 10, 30 PSI. We're getting freaking zero. I think we're supposed to have like 45 PSI. So let's diagnose that. Brand new fuel pump, I don't know. A fuel pressure regulator, just dumping everything back the tank or what? And plus, when I was checking it, I checked it with the return crimped off and without, and with it crimped off, should be getting however much that pump's putting out because it's the regulate. You know what I'm saying. With the return pinched off, it should be that system pressure. So I don't know. And I don't know where this ninth injector is. I don't know where the fuel pressure regulator is. I don't know nothing about TBIs. But I guess we're about to learn. Boy, do we love learning, huh, Duff? No, not so much. Just like R-I-D-E-S's rides. All right, let's keep troubleshooting. I've been playing around with it some more. Don't play with it too much, kids. It'll fall off. Anyway, uh, I got a Noid light hooked up to the injector. We got all kinds of power and ground Noid in a way. So we got everything we need to the injectors. We can still have bad injectors. We got all kinds of spark tests on that. So we got spark and we got signal the injectors. So we could have bad injectors or we could not be getting fuel. With the return line, pinched off, provided our new fuel pump is any good and my plumbing is correct, which it should be because it's sending pressure to where it needs to and it's getting fuel back. With that return line pinched off, we should have 
as much pressure as that pump can possibly build. And you can pinch on that rubber fuel line and there's, there's pressure there. Let me show you the Noid light action and the spark action. You wanna look too? Okay. So we're back probing our fuel injector and the neat part about this Noid light is it's an LED. So you gotta hook an LED up the right way. Well, not these. If you got it hooked up the right way, it'll flash and it's working and you got power to it. It'll flash green. If you got it hooked up backwards, it'll flash red. So you can watch that. Then we got our sparky spark right here. Hopefully you can see that. Let's see if I can get you a better view. There, you should be able to see the spark and the noidisms. Come on, noidy. There you go. Let me show you. So I kept cranking there, and it'll stay running longer if I keep cranking. But as soon as we stop cranking, it stops running and we keep cranking. We got spark, we got signal to fuel. So we're not losing compression. So clearly we're not getting fuel where we need fuel. And the injectors are working, it seems like, to start it. So if the injectors were dirty, they would be dirty all the time and it wouldn't run good. And it runs good when it starts. So I'm thinking we just don't have enough fuel pressure. So I gotta figure out a way to get more or better fuel pressure up here. And I don't know what to do because it's direct plumbed and it's a new fuel pump, which I can't say our new Carter fuel pump isn't bad, but let's uh, keep digging. I don't know what I'm gonna do next. Great, grand, wonderful. I wonder if I could put an inline, high pressure, higher pressure, LS fuel pump in there. I might dig through my stash, see what I got. Let's see what we can do. The saga continues. All right, next we're gonna put an inline, higher pressure, pump see what happens but so this is a return line i've got it pinched off not hooked to anything and you can see we got pressure or here anyway yeah all of the pressures so i don't know where the pressure is going to or why the gauge isn't coming up or why it isn't running but we're gonna hook this back up we're gonna unhook feel how much pressure is on the pressure side we're gonna unhook that Put this inline pump in, wire that in, see what happens. We're running out of ideas. Don't get it, there's definitely pressure there. I guess we're just gonna get more pressure. So I got this inline high pressure pump. I've used it to start a bunch of LS's over the years and other things, so I know it works. I think it says made in USA. I'm gonna take this cover off, see which way it flows, because I couldn't remember. We're gonna Hardwire this thing in and see what happens. Probably just blow a line up somewhere or a hose. Well, hopefully, we get some pressure at the common rail, the fuel rail. Well, you know what I mean. Okay. Okay. And we'll also be using the in tank pump to pressure feed this pump. So, should be getting fuel of this pump. Should be getting fuel up there. I don't know. We should be having so much gall dang fuel. We should be whistling zippity doo dah out our bungles. You'll be whistling zippity doo dah out of your pump screaming. I can hear fuel going through here. We still got nothing on our gauge, but we'll give it a shot. See what happens. I don't know what to do. We still got no fuel pressure. You should have all kinds of fuel pressure. It's flowing back into the tank, so I know it's returning. I suppose we could plug off. <laughs> this just doesn't make sense. So the fuel pre the only thing that's regulating the fuel pressure is the fuel pressure regulator. And when you cap off or pinch off or whatever the return side, you should be able to Get as much pressure as your pump's gonna build. So if your pump will put out 80 pounds of pressure, you're gonna have 80 pounds of pressure at your injectors. But even when we plug that off, we're still not getting pressure at the fuel rail. So the only thing I can think of is there's something plugged, then how are we getting return? I don't know, I'm, mine is blown. I'm gonna try plugging that return again 
and hooking up that high pressure, but I, I feel like that thing's just going to blow one of our rubber hoses off the line because we don't have any barbed fittings on there. But we'll find out. We will find the weakest link one way or another. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Even if this thing doesn't run. The saga continues. Still no pressure at the gauge, but it's blasting fuel everywhere through a pinhole in my line because we put enough pressure to this gauge because it's got to have somewhere to go when we pinched off the return. The weak link is the uh, hose in my tester. So we're going to hook a different one up once I get one and see if we're getting pressure. The crappy part about that is if we get a new one and we got pressure, I don't really know where to go next. The injectors could all be plugged and it's just running off that cold start injector. I don't know. Maybe we could test. I wonder if I could test that cold start injector to see if that only gets pulses for so long. Or we could just unhook that injector and see if it doesn't start at all. And then we know that the other injectors are plugged up or the lines are plugged up or whatever. It's taking it all in. The TBI life. I know. TPI. I'm sure a bunch of you are screaming just like on that TBI. Put a carburetor on it. I could do that. That's easy enough. Just... Or better yet, put some type of fuel injection on top of it, like an aftermarket Edelbrock or Holly or Phytech, whatever. We could do that, but that kind of defeats the purpose. I want to get the tune port ready because that's the only thing that this car's got going for it. Not a lot going for this car. The interior that I've now made stink like gasoline. Okay, uh, let's dig into that ninth injector, the cold start injector. It's right down in here. There's a extra so you got your fuel rails uh off the back of this fuel rail there's another line that goes to this ninth injector right down in here i'm gonna see if i can get that unhooked and see if we can't get that unhooked and uh see what it does then stay tuned well that was pretty painless got the cold start aka ninth injector unplugged let's see what it does now So I think that's what's going on. I think it's starting off that injector and running for a little bit. That's how it's running because it's, it's changed. Now let's hook it up just to verify that's what the issue was. Not the issue, the prognosis, the diagnosis. Let's plug it back in, see what it does. Oh, ninth injector. What a strange life you lead. Let's try it again. Pretty sure that seals the deal that it's running off this injector, so we know that one's working. Now we got to figure out why the other ones are not working. Hmm. We know we're getting fuel up here. I think it goes. You can't see because this silly throttle cavity, cage, tunnel, the tunage. It hides all that, but I believe the line goes in on the driver's passenger side and then comes across to this passenger side, and that's where this tees off. So I know we got pressure up there. So either we got something in that rail or we got a bunch of dirty injectors. It's funny that thing runs that good off of one injector. I'm going to unhook injector on the other side and hook our Noid light up just to make sure that those are firing because somebody on the interweb says that they fire these separately. You can have run off one side and not the other. I don't know. I don't know things. I don't know TBI, TPI, PTI, PSI, CSI things. For your viewing pleasure, the number four fuel injector with a Noid light hooked up. So, we know what's firing the injectors. I think we got some dirty slash plugged up injectors or fuel rails. And out of curiosity, I'm gonna hook our Noid light up to this ninth injector, cold start injector, whatever. We're gonna see what this thing does. I bet it drops out shortly after it fires. <laughs> Sure 
sure enough, that's what's going on. This thing fires for just a bit and then uh, kicks off. So, I think we're going to be taking this upper intake, plenum, whatever you want to call it, apart. So feel free to learn with me on how to take a tune port injection apart. And I hate my life. This thing better be so freaking fast. I'm going to get it running. I don't even know. It's going to be so great. Probably not. I am no way an expert at these things. First one I've ever taken apart, so I probably took it apart wrong. But I couldn't see any other way to get that upper plenum off. Tore the gasket, of course. One of them. The other one seems okay. We could probably DD hack shop it together though. But let's take a look at this thing. So here you can see the gasket we tore. It looks like there's a EGR port in there. And then, yeah, everything's all just tied together. And I think these tubes are steel or aluminum they're not i thought they were cast but they're formed material whole lot of mouse house in there uh this is our fuel pressure regulator this right back here is our line that goes to our ninth injector i got our screwdriver of death uh looks like there was a, a map sensor in the manifold absolute pressure we had our hose going to our brake booster vacuum hose there's a vacuum hose going to this pressure fuel pressure regulator another vacuum hose going to some magical box there i don't know what this guy is i'm guessing it's emissions related there's a similar i think it's egr is what it is kick down for 700 r4 or our tv cable throttle valve it's not a kick down there's another vacuum port up here there's heater hoses going to it uh the throttle body right here is liquid cooled throttle position sensor and then this might be some type of temp sensor i would imagine and then there's another temp sensor in the head uh, i think the one in the head is for the gauge and this one is for your whatever runs your ecu stuff we got a little mouse house action going on in there so let's clean that out and then i hope we can just sneak these fuel rails out of here i don't know see how much further we got to go looks like it's got to come together because there's it's all tied together we're gonna have to somehow unhook that ninth injector these things are just a pain to work on but yeah i don't see anything in here that's culprit other than this nice mouse house in here i wonder if there's anybody still living in it i think we're all right Okay, I'm gonna dig into this some more and see what we can, what we gotta do to get this thing apart to get the injectors out so we can clean those. That should be great. I was hoping that we could take these guys out of there because they're in the way, but I'm guessing there's some type of gasket on them or O-ring or seal them. Also, I don't know what I'm doing, so just keep winging it. We got a vacuum cleaner, that'd be a great idea. Remember, a clean TPI is a happy TPI. A dirty TPI is a non-running TPI. Ah. Yep, you're going to come over and do all the work while I go take a lunch break? I suppose I could. Yep. I got to have a lunch break. The man, the myth, the legend, Mojo himself is going to take care of this. He says he don't know nothing about tune ports, but they're basically the same thing as a 6.2 diesel, right? Yep. Yep, same thing. Just pressurized fuel yep. going in the cylinders. Suck, squeeze, bang, boom. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just winging it. Just like you taught me. Yep. Act, like, act like you know what you're doing and fake it till you make it, right? I could bring you a list that you could go down. Troubleshooting? Yeah. Yeah, bring that list. Yeah, we'll see what it says. I got it. 
you got you got a list yeah i don't know what we're getting into here but we're gonna pull some injectors out i think see if that gets us any closer you got a spare set of gaskets around for a tune port we'll just have to use some beer boxes all right you better go to lunch before you waste away my neighbor was in the big city he was nice enough to pick up a different fuel pressure gauge for us so i'm gonna hook that up and verify that we got fuel pressure up here which we have i don't see any reason why we can't and like i said that uh, amazon fuel pressure gauge i've been using for years has been suspect for quite some time let's see what this thing does there you go look at that 40 pounds of fuel pressure I'd say we'd throw this gauge right in the trash, but I want to keep this chunk of hose, even though it's got a leak in it now. Basically this fitting. And hopefully we can use this hook to a fuel source, and tap onto these Schrader valves, and try to get some of these fuel injection engines running with a uh, remote fuel tank through the uh, Schrader valve. We'll give it a shot someday. This line wants to twist off. It's a fuel line. And I usually heat up brake lines. Never heated up fuel line. We're gonna have the fire extinguisher handy. See what happens. There's some fuel in there. See what that does. Just a little touch of the heat. Because like we say, a little heat goes a long ways. Serviceability on the old tune port, not real good, but we got our part. And I don't see anything terrible on these injectors. I expected a bunch of buildup or something on the ends, but see if we can pop these out and we'll try to run them through the ultrasonic cleaner. And see what happens, I guess. And maybe we can try to figure out how to get some 
maybe I got some TBI connectors around and hook up to these guys and hook our tank up to this and try to test it on a bench, maybe? Who knows? We'll see. See what happens. As far as removing these injectors, they got this cute little clip here, and it sounds like you just gotta rotate it this way and then tugs right out. I'll let you know how that goes. Yep, there's your problem. She's chock full of rust in there. I don't know that we're gonna be able to ultrasonic clean that out of there. Let me go see if I can get some coming, you know. Overnight parts from Japan. Overnight parts from Japan. Anybody got any tune port injectors laying around? I'm fairly certain LS ones will not fit. Oh yeah, they're all chock full of rust. We're probably gonna have to clean this fuel rail as well. It's funny, the ninth injector worked. I suppose that was because that one, I know that's gotta go through the same fuel rail as well. Maybe a couple of these were working, but I doubt it. Well, that one looks tolerable at least. Yep, that one's chock full of rust as well. Metal bodies, they are like the old 6.2 injectors. The newer ones are, well, they're steel, I guess. Hence the rust. The LS ones are a little bit of aluminum and a little bit of plastic. These are just a lot of steel. They're magnetic, you can tell by the screwed by Mordski repair screwdriver. Get yours at Mordski.com. No look on the injectors, but we call old Chris Craft, and he said, if you got a set out of a Ford, 90s Ford product, they should be the same. So we're gonna pull some out of this uh, Eddie Bauer 98 Expedition. And uh, we checked the old Expedition, and it unplugs and plugs into this injector. So it should work, maybe? Let's give it a whirl. They're like 80 bucks new through the old Rock Auto. And we have to wait a week and a half, and everybody around here can't get them until Monday. And that's when our video comes out. Tuesday, Napatod said. So the gift that keeps on giving the Boneyard out back. Can you believe that, Duff? Injectors from a 98 54 Expedition. Eddie Bauer are the same as an 86 IROC Camaro. That explains why the old Expeditions are so good. This one's got lighted running boards, visors, body colored mirrors, two-tone pinstripes. This thing's painted grill. This thing's way more gooder than ours. CD changer in the glove box. Oh yeah. All right, hopefully these are easier to pull out than uh, the old TPI. I'll let you know. Got one out. I'm gonna go do a test fit and make sure it's gonna work on our application. This thing was running uh, about it, well, it was tagged uh, a year ago. Supposedly the engine's blown up, but who knows? Didn't verify. Got it reasonable, got it delivered. So I'm gonna go see if this is the right length, width, height, and diameter, and we'll go from there. Oh, she's a little bit shorter. Story of my life. Maybe we'll do a little playing around and see if we can't get it to interchange. We'll see. It's worth a shot. Well, it looks like the Ford is about an eighth inch shorter. So, we're gonna pull them all out and see if it fixes it anyway. Hopefully we get into the uh, bore far enough on the common rail, fuel rail, and uh, in the intake to seal up on the O-ring. The diameters are correct on these O-rings. Should be fine, right? Well, that's the worst that happens. We burn the whole car down? Well, hopefully we get it outside for the shop burns now. I'm gonna go grab those other seven, and we'll go from there.
all the Expedition injectors are in place. Things seem like they fit up pretty dang well. Uh, fuel lines are hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and turn the key on, pressurize the pump, see what happens. We don't have any power hooked up to the injectors, but we're gonna check for leaks. That's the main thing, because the difference in the height between the injectors, between the old Z28 and the old Eddie Bauer, is what concerns me. So we're gonna check for leaks. We got leaks. It's pretty much gonna be game over. Maybe, probably. But we're not gonna have any leaks. So let's turn the key on, see what happens. Come on, no leaks. Oh yeah, we got a leak back here because we gotta hook up the line for the ninth injector. So this ninth injector, it looks like it sprays into uh, what I would call the EGR port, but it must spray somewhere that all the cylinders can get fuel somehow. Well, let's tighten this thing up and hopefully we don't have any more leaks. Cross your fingers. Let's hook up our fancy new fuel pressure gauge. Let's see what kind of pressure we're getting. We're already at 15 pounds, so I'd say we're doing something. Looks like it's bleeding down pretty fast. I don't see any leaks other than where I connected the gauge, so let's snug that up. Try her again. I don't see fuel pouring out anywhere, that's for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and put our handy dandy crimp off tool on the return line just to make sure that it's not bleeding back on the return side when we shut the key off. I don't think that should be an issue, but one less thing to uh, worry about. Still not seeing any puddles, so I don't know where it's bleeding off to unless it's leaking off into a cylinder past an injector. Maybe that's what killed the old 5.4 in the Ford. All right, return line is pinched off. Let's see what happens now when we fire up the pump. Heck yeah, holding right at 40 PSI. Should be good enough to make it run. Like, let's be honest, these injectors are sized wrong and everything else for this application but let's give it a while i'm guessing we need a fuel pressure regulator there's probably like a pinhole in the diaphragm or something that's letting fuel return so yeah should be good to go other than you know we don't have new gaskets and we got the wrong injectors and everything else but good enough for the girls we go with let's finish putting her together
All right, moment of truth. I got a good feeling this is, this is gonna work. We took our time, we put it all together right, we busted some knuckles. Didn't have new gaskets, so I'm guessing we're gonna have a vacuum leak, but I'm gonna hook up the battery first, and then we're gonna try it. I'm a quick one. You know, it really wasn't too bad. Anybody who's worked on throttle bodies is gonna know, but I think there's six bolts that hold those throttle bodies, tune parts, the, the, the tunage on. And one of them comes from the inside on each side. And the one on the driver's side, you gotta sneak in between the fuel pressure regulator and the distributor. And that thing is a real bugger. Bugger. Other than that, pretty serviceable for the most part. Especially if we never haven't done one before. Hopefully we got everything hooked up. I did break one vacuum line, so I cut a chunk out, put a little chunk of rubber vacuum tubing in there. Should be good. Let's turn our key on. Check for leaks. Uh, I hear noise up here. Son of a biscuit. That one decided to leak. Maybe. Probably. Definitely. Why did that not leak yesterday? And leaks now. Cylinder number four. Because when I checked this morning, I think saddle night it still had 10 pounds of pressure on it. And I can't remember what I bumped or hooked up or whatever, but there was still pressure this morning. I suppose I wiggled something just right. Maybe we can wiggle it just right back into place. I did have to twist and orient these injectors just a little bit to get the connectors hooked up, so. I'm guessing when it happened, that's when it happened. All right, let's try it again. You guys can keep an eye on it. Which one is it? It's definitely number two. Why? Why are you leaking profusely? Well, the good news is it runs. The bad news is this injector is not going to fit our application. Mother trucker. If I hold up on it with a bar, it quits leaking. I'm guessing that's the height difference. It pushes it down. Obviously, there's pressure on the top side. There's only pressure on the bottom side when it's firing. And uh, we got ourselves a big fire hazard, speaking of firing here. And uh, we're probably going to lose the shop. We spend much more time working on this thing. Or we're going to burn the shop right to the mother truck and ground. So let me uh, reevaluate my life decisions for a bit here, and I'll get back to you. An 11 sixteenths just barely fits around that injector. If we can get one that's the right thickness and put some tension on it, like this nice American made Thorson right here, maybe that'll stop the leak. I hate to sacrifice a Thorson, but you know, it's for the greater good of the YouTube community. Let's see what happens now. It ain't dumb if it works. There's nothing more permanent than a temporary injector fix. See if I can fix this squeaky belt. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. And there you have it, folks. A 1986 Chevrolet Camaro 
350 cubic inch, 5.7 liter, tune port injection, running for the first time in who knows how many years on nothing more than 1999 Ford Expedition 5.4 liter factory fuel injectors. And she even revs up. Check this out. Oh, who's ready for a ride? I don't know if we can go for a ride. I don't trust these injectors. We might burn this mother to the ground. That is gas that I'm standing in, you know, right, buddy? Yeah, he knows. We did it. Anybody could have thrown a carburetor in a different distributor in this thing. Intake? Oh no, not at Mortskis. We make it work with what we got. Shout out to Chris Kraft down in Watertown, South Dakota, for giving us the idea of using Ford Expedition fuel injectors. He actually said Crown Vic, but. Thanks, Chris. What do you think, though? Pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Like I said, this thing needs injectors. We should probably put intake gaskets in it. And while you're in there, you should do a fuel pressure regulator. Check the fuel pressure gauge out. This thing's uh, tippy tippy tapping the rotisserie chicken here. Tippy tippy tap the rotisserie chicken. It's, uh, it ain't real happy. I walked around back to see how everything was doing. Figured out our uh, fuel pressure debacle. I still had this thing clamped on the return line. And that's probably what blew that injector off. That injector probably would have been fine. But all that pressure had to go somewhere because it was pegged to the moon. Check out that gauge now. Nice constant 38 PSI. Don't forget, we're running off a five gallon bucket fuel cell. The car actually kind of changed pitch on how it's running. Oh yeah, now we're returning too much. We should probably put some tub and tile around that. Whoops, you forgot to seal that lid up though. Really? You gonna ride in the back? Okay. Forty-five pounds of oil pressure. Says we got a full tank of fuel. Must have the five-gallon bucket all the way up. Come up here. I don't want our ratchet strapped in five-gallon bucket to run you over. Brakes? Oh, we got no power steer. Smells like gas in here, though. No. Oh, that's exhaust coming through that hole back there, too. That's handy. Maybe we should crack a window. Oh, for cheese and rice. Hold on, window switches are in the middle. So silly. And we don't have a sway bar end link either. Woo! Posse must work. She slides pretty good on the ice. Why did we not think to check the power steering? All right, left mirror adjust. Okay, power mirror. Son of a, I want my money back. Fixed it. There you go. Duff's in the way on the other side. Needs exhaust. And it needs a hole patch in the floor so that the exhaust doesn't come into the cabin. Power steering needs to be topped off. There it is! The old second gen Ford Taurus.
support expedition injector. So I'd say we're pretty good. We're money ahead already. I mean, we're definitely not money ahead, but yeah. So yeah, don't be throwing your tune port throttle body LS fuel injection away. Diagnose it, make it work. It's way better than a carburetor. It really, really is. I mean, it hasn't even broke down on us yet, right though? Yeah, this is pretty good. I do think one of these things would be sweet with an LS in it. Because it's already set up for fuel injection, and it's already, what, a whopping 190 horsepower, so you double that. You got overdrive, AC, put some cruise on it. Good to go. Can't believe this thing didn't come with cruise. Oh, she's icy. Skidding across the tracks. Who buys a newsie and doesn't get cruise control or tilt wheel? I do I do appreciate the uh, black wall saving a few bucks there. They probably took that $92 they got from the black walls and spent that money on the uh, the upgraded 305. Oh! Rhubarb! That's definitely not the ice. That's that's the rear end. That's not tied in place. Right, Doc? Right. I can't believe that that engine isn't revving to the moon. We don't have a giant vacuum leak with those used TPI gaskets. Crazy. Hey, if you want to own this thing, price and availability in the video description. I really don't need this thing, but at the same time, there's a lot of good pieces here. And you probably could fix this thing if you really wanted to put a fuel tank and exhaust and source all the stuff in the back that they cut up. You know, maybe put some injectors in it. Gonna need tires and center caps. And uh, ozone on the inside to uh, get rid of the frickin' fuel smell. Good cleaning. The interior is the best part of the car though, ain't it though? Keep her out of the rhubarb. Slowest donut ever. Okay, get her straightened back out. She's, she's brisk out today. I'm gonna roll my window off. You seem to be enjoying yours open, so. Let's do this. Oh yeah, the power steering leaks, that's why it's empty. We noted that earlier. What do you think, Dom? Are you in love with the uh, Z28? Yeah, me either. Could be worse. Do we dare try the heat? Is the temp gauge coming up? It had coolant in it, so... That's a plus. Is any heat coming out? How about on your side? Oh yeah, heater works good! Temp gauge is, is pegged to the moon, so that's got to be wrong. How does the pedal look? Yeah, it's definitely got 134,000. It's not a 34,000 mile pedal. Should have worn our Mortski beanie hat. Available at Mortski.com. Those things are super nice. I would trade them all to not have cold weather, but here we are. She just wants to shimmy sideways when you give her the old meat and potatoes dump. Oh boy. Can I put your window up now since you're no longer enjoying it? Okay, thanks. I know I paid way too much for this car, but uh, NASCAR Arthur was our battery sponsor. Uh, I bought a fuel pump, rock auto, for like 30 bucks. And put some used injectors in it, a couple chunks of fuel hose. We got this thing running pretty cheap. Had to buy a $30 fuel pressure tester because ours crapped a bit, but yeah. It didn't take much to get it going. Okay, I shouldn't lie, that, that was a lot. That was a lot of work. I'm ready for this car to be over with. Well, you think it'll dump the drive shaft on the highway duff? likely. These old tires get so hard and they're just terrible on ice. 
see how they are for burnouts. Because we don't have rear brakes, so it should be perfect for that. Ready? And check out our other videos. I had a lot of fun with this car. Put a smile on my face. But remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, even if you got a five gallon bucket fuel cell, as long as you're having fun. All right. See you next week. What are we going to work on next week? No more Camaros. Two weeks in a row is too much. I'm going to have a sandwich.